This is a complete guide to creating your own VPN. And this is a very important thing for you to have. If you have a US LLC and you want to create a PayPal account, a US PayPal account using your US LLC. I tried creating a US PayPal account in my US LLC without a VPN or a VPS, and they ended up shutting down my PayPal account saying that they found out I was not in the US. Therefore, it's very important that you have a VPN. In this case, I'm going to say use a VPS. And you might be wondering what's the difference between a VPS and a VPN. Now, the VPN is a virtual private network while VPS is virtual private server. The only similarity between the two is they are both virtual. With the VPN, you and a lot of other people share the same server and the same network, which means that your IP address is going to be bouncing around. It's going to change a lot. And if there is a an issue with the server, it's going to affect every single person. But the VPS, on the other hand, is a lot more secure and is a lot more stable because you have your own dedicated virtual server. So with PayPal, VPN is almost always going to have issues, if not now, later down the line. But with VPS, it's a lot more stable. So we're going to use Hostinger's VPS service to set up our VPN and in my opinion I think that Hostinger is one of the best web hosting services on the internet right now. Not to mention they're also very affordable. There'll be a Hostinger referral link in the description and if you use that link you're going to get 20% off your subscriptions. Now with that long introduction out of the way let's get to work. Once on the Hostinger site if we click on hosting here you can see the VPS hosting. If I click on this we can compare the prices and the $6.99 one will be the best one if you don't plan to use this for only your VPN. Maybe you want to have some websites on here, then this will be the best one and it's the most popular. But if you want to just use this for the VPN alone, then you can do with the smallest package. So let's go with the $4.99 one. Click on the choose plan there. And then I will also advise to go for the longest plan here, which gives you 24 months and at $4.99 because you're going to of course save more especially if this is something you want to keep using going forward i know i'll keep using it going forward so it only makes sense to save more um because this is an offer that is for the first time going forward you have to pay um, as you go so that brings us to about 119 dollars but if you use our link uh, if you use our referral link you're going to shave off another 20 percent off of that 100 19 and then you will have to pay about 95 or 96 dollars at the end of the day so you just complete your payment and sign into your account but i already have my account so i'm going to log in and we can continue the process so as you went through the process and paid without creating an account you're going to have your account at the end of the day and it's going to look something like this but if you already have an account maybe you have an existing account with hosting where you have your shared hosting like i do i have uh, a lot of my websites here already on shared hosting you don't have to create another account um, just to do this you can just click on vps here and on top of that just get your plan right here like i already have one here so you just click on get a new vps plan the kvm vps is what it is but however you choose to go about it whether you're using a new account or an existing one you're going to get to this page where you select the location for your new vps in my case i'm going to select the united states because i'm mostly going to be using this for my us paypal account for my us llc uh, but you can always change this later inside your hosting our account so I'm going to select us there and click on continue now we're going to install an os on our vps so i'm going to select the plain os and install the ubuntu os the latest version there select that and then we're going to move on to the monarchs malware scanner they've given to us for free select that and click on continue this is free so there's nothing to pay here so select that click on continue and create a root password for our vps this is different from the one we're going to create next the open vpn password this is for the vps so they can be different passwords now everything is done click on finish setup and it's going to initiate and process everything and give it some time and we can now have access to click on manage vps and go into our vps dashboard if you're gaining value from this video don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe now in this next part of the video we're going to set up our open vpn on our new vps now once everything is set up we will go to os and panel and then click on operating system uh, because we want to install the application i i installed the plain os before i think we should be installing the um, Ubuntu 
application for OpenVPN, which is what we have here. So select that and then um, click on change OS. And then you confirm, of course, move to the next page where you now create your password for your VPN. I told you the first one was for your VPS. This is going to be for your open VPN that you use to log into your open VPN client and also to log into your VPN whenever you want to use it. So now that we are done creating our password, we click on confirm. And then we are going to see all the information that we have set up. It might take a while to set up and everything. And once everything is done, we're going to see the information for our OpenVPN. We have the username there and then we can click on manage app. Once we click to manage the OpenVPN app, we might get an error page that says this connection is not private or is not secure, something like that. Just click to show details and continue to the page anyways. This is only happening because we don't have an SSL installed. So click to uh, visit the website regardless, and we're going to get to the OpenVPN website to log in. So this is where you log in your OpenVPN username and password, the second one you created. Sign in and we can download the applications. I'm on the macOS right now and it automatically detected that, but you can click to see other platforms. You can install this on pretty much any platform, the Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, Windows. You can always skip this step and download later at any time. But for now, I'm going to download the macOS app because later in this video, I'm going to show you how to install it on macOS and also on the iOS. Now that I've downloaded, I'm going to go to the top right and click on open VPN and go to admin portal. And then I'm going to agree to the terms here. Just click on agree so that we can head over to our OpenVPN dashboard. Now, the next thing is to click on configuration and go to the VPN settings. And we, we just have a few settings to change here. So under VPS settings, scroll all the way down till you find the routing section and where it says, should VPN clients have access to private subnets? We want to change this option to no if it says yes or any other option. So change it to no. And then on that DNS settings where it says have clients use the same DNS server as the access server host. We want to say yes. If it's already yes, leave it at yes and leave every other thing at the default and then save the settings and then update your running server. And then once we update, we will go back to our status overview and then we're going to start and re restart the VPN service. So just click on, st we're going to stop rather, stop the VPN service and confirm the stop and then start the VPN again. So anytime you make any change, you want to start, uh, stop and start your VPN service to refresh things. Now that the process is complete, I'm going to show you how to install and use your open VPN on macOS and also on iOS. But the process is going to be similar regardless of the operating system you use, whether it's Windows or Android. So now I'm going to open the macOS installation file that I downloaded previously and select my processor. I'm on the silicon, so I'm just going to select that and go through the normal process of installing a file or a, a, an application on macOS. And once we're done, we are going to search for and open the open VPN software that we've just installed. I'm going to agree to the terms there and toggle on the thing whenever I want to use it, enter my password and click on OK. So this is your v open VPN password now. And then if I go to not VPNs, what is my address, my IP address, you can see I'm in Nigeria. But if I refresh, it says I'm now in the United States. So I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to turn off my VPN and head back to my browser. And this is the US PayPal site. You can see it says I'm in Nigeria. So I'm going to go back now and turn on my VPN. And once it's on, I go back to the site. That blue bar is going to go off when I refresh, meaning I'm now in the US and I can use this like I'm in the US. So this is very important to create your PayPal account, which is what I need this for. Same applies to the um, mobile on iOS. Now I go to the app store, search for the open VPN, and this is the one right here. I have it already installed. So I'm going to click to open the application and the process is pretty much the same thing. You toggle on whenever you want to use it and it's going to prompt you to enter your password. And once you enter in your password like so and click on OK, you are in, you, your, your VPN is on. So I'm going to head back again on my mobile to the not VPNs, what is my IP? And you can see now I'm in the United States. So anytime you want to use this, just toggle it on. So if I go back and turn it off, 
and go back to the NordVPN. So what is my IP? You can see I'm back in Nigeria. Mm -hmm.